Today, we're taking a look at a subscriber's designs for a delivery app concept. I'm going to show you what the original designs look like. I'm going to show you how I redesigned it. And then I'm going to do a side by side comparison of both designs where I give my feedback and explain each of the design decisions that I made. He did a great job on these designs, but I'm going to explain exactly how to take them to the next level. So let's get into it right now. All right, we are going to start with the main flow on this app, which is what you would do to order a drone delivery. So to start this out, we're going to select start booking and we're brought to this map page and I'm going to click where to to start this delivery and I'm going to fill in this pickup address and delivery address. So this takes us to the pickup address screen and then delivery address. So we select that and then that enables this confirm button, which we will click. And this takes us to this page to add in all of our details for length, width, height, weight. And then we can check the availability, which would then bring up this screen where we can select a drone. And now it looks like in this prototype, we aren't able to click next, but we can click save as draft. Uh, and then you go to the drafts folder. So we can see our trip that we have saved in here. Um, so if we select this, that brings us to this confirmation page of all the details that we inputted. And if we press confirm, we have now scheduled this drone delivery. So that is the main part of the order flow. And now what we're going to do is go to my designs for how I'm going to update this whole flow. So right after I go through my designs is when I'm going to give my feedback and my rationale for why I updated these designs. So getting into it, we start on a pretty similar looking page where we see our map and this where to option, but I took out the different options on this panel and just replaced it with your delivery routes and down below, we can select between new delivery or see our scheduled deliveries. So getting into that main flow, we have now this panel that lifts up where you can select your pickup location um, by either typing this in or selecting recent pickup addresses. Uh, so we're going to select this one here and then drop off location works in a pretty similar way. So we're going to select that. And now that we have a pickup and drop off location, it will show on the map where the start and end is. So you can visually see exactly where that is going. And then if we select next, we're taken to this new screen where we input our delivery details, um, pretty similar to what we saw on the flow bef uh, before on the original designs. So here you're going to get a confirmation at the top about exactly where it's going, just so that's always in front of you. And then below we have our uh, length with height weight. Once those are inputted, we can go to next and then select the drone and date and time here and total cost. And then once that's all selected, we're going to go to next and that will lead to a confirmation screen, um, which I'm, I'm not going to focus on right now. I just want to look more at the pages that have the most functionality. So that's all I'm going to show out of my designs here. And now we're going to get into feedback where we compare these designs side by side. I'll start now with the first page in this flow, this map screen where we can start to initiate a delivery or see some different options. Now I'll go through these one by one from top to bottom and explain each design decision that I made. So starting at the top, um, in the initial designs, there was this hamburger menu 
and profile icon, but I didn't think there was a reason to have a profile icon outside of this hamburger menu because you can simply add a My Profile option into that hamburger menu and eliminate the need for one of those icons. So in my version, I have just this hamburger menu and then I added the logo to the top here because what I'm doing throughout this flow is following a, a pattern of having text at the top describing the page and then having some sort of navigation right next to it. Once we get a little bit deeper into the flow, you'll see uh, exactly what I mean. Now getting into the map, um, there was this location icon here on the map, but I wasn't exactly sure why that was there or if that was serving a purpose because there isn't any, any sort of active delivery going on in this state or anything. So I don't think that uh, we need it there. So what I did in my version was just put a, an icon showing where exactly the user is on the map. And getting farther down this page, we have a few visual changes that, that I made before getting into some of the UX details here. So in this version, there is this panel that has this uh, gray color scheme. We have gray background, uh, darker gray buttons, and then the text on top. But I didn't think that this color scheme really works here because it kind of looks like a, a color scheme you'd use in a wireframe. And I also didn't think that the contrast was working well between these grays and, and the gray buttons kind of look like they're deactivated. So what I did in my version was did this white background and then we just have the where to button that I kept in here and made that a little bit of a lighter color just to ensure that it looks, that it does not look like it's deactivated. And then just another thing to say about this where to button, I wasn't really seeing a reason why it, it wouldn't go all the way out to the margins of this whole section. Um, so I think it should go out to end exactly where all the other buttons on this page end. And then the other thing about it is it seems like there's a bit too much of an indentation here between the edge of this button and the magnifying glass. So over in my version, um, just fix those two things. So pretty small detail there. And then up next, I took out recent trips on my version. Um, with recent trips being here, I was thinking that the main reason for having it was to look at recent trips and then to reuse a, de a delivery route that you selected before, or if you need to go back and see your delivery history. So the way that I solved for that was in my version, I have your delivery routes that you'd be able to save in the order flow. And then if you want to see your order history, then that would be contained in the hamburger menu up at the top. So I thought that this would be a, a quick, easy way of accessing commonly used routes, which I assume recent trips was trying to achieve. And next, um, oh, before I get into this recently used section, I also took out this schedule a trip button because it pretty much does the exact same thing as this where to button. So within where to, you can schedule a trip. So no need for two different buttons. And now this recently used section, um, I wasn't really seeing a strong purpose for it because usually when you have one of these sections where you have recently used or shortcuts or something like this, it's usually for something that's deeper within an app that's harder to get to. So it, it would save the user from say taking five different steps to get somewhere. But with the things that are in recently used here, like, like settings, drafts, cre credit cards, I think those would all be things that would be contained within that hamburger menu. So you wouldn't really need to have it here because it's already just one click away. So I took out recently used completely. <coughs> and um, what I did was use some of that, that screen space to have this new little menu at the bottom. Um, this allows the user to toggle back and forth between new delivery and scheduled deliveries. 
because my assumption here was that those would be the mo the two most important things to see on this menu. You'd either need to schedule a, a new delivery, which is clear, but I think scheduled deliveries would probably be one of the most important things to see because if a company was had, had all these uh, deliveries scheduled, they would have a lot of different things logistically depending on those scheduled deliveries. Like they would need to know if a time changes or they would need to notify someone who's picking it up when a uh, new delivery is, is coming or something like that. So those are some of the main decisions for this page. And now we'll get to the next step in this flow. So this is the page where you put in your route. So we have our pickup address and delivery address. So we've got a few pieces of feedback and some changes that I made here. Now, the first thing is these labels over the form. So each label is contained within this orange background. And I had a little bit of a problem with this because it looks like it is a button. Um, so I didn't think that you'd really want to keep the orange behind these labels. So over in my version, just the plain text over a text uh, over a text field, like you'd more commonly see in apps. And then the next thing is this details to remember. Now I, I didn't really think that we needed to keep this, and the reason for that is because. Each of these details here are not really things that would influence the user clicking this confirm button and deciding to place an order. Um, so th th things like invoice sent directly to mail, manual available after your purchase. I think those are things that could be concluded in a probably a confirmation page. Um, the only thing is maybe this total cost includes full insurance. I think that that could potentially be placed on the page where we show the prices for each delivery. Um, so in my version, just uh, didn't include that. And then a, another thing to say about this page here is when you, um, we can't really see this here, but when I showed on the clickable prototype, when you click on type in your address, it takes you to a different view or, or page. I don't know what, what, to, what to consider that exactly, where you type in the address and, and get a dropdown. But I didn't really think you need to leave this page to be able to have that. So what I have on my version here is we have our text field where you can input the address and then below uh, just be able to easily set select the pickup address and that that of course would change to drop off addresses as well and you're all just staying within the same view here without needing to jump back and forth between different pages all when you're basically doing the same task so i wanted to keep the user right here within the same view to minimize that jumping around and the next thing, um, I thought this, this was kind of just a more of a nice to have, but once those two addresses are put in, then the, this panel lowers and you'll be able to see on the map exactly where the start point and end point of this delivery is. So this is kind of something similar to what you would see in say an app like Uber, but it's adapted to this drone delivery um, sort of experience. So this is the page where you input your package details and you select a date and time for your package to be picked up. So I made some pretty significant changes to this page. And the first one is how this whole check availability system works. So in the original version, you click on this check availability button and then you're taken to kind of this page within a page where you select your date and time and the drone that's going to pick it up. So I thought that this could create some confusion because to me, this looks like you're, you've gone to another step in the flow, but really you're going here and then you're going back to this page. So I didn't know if that jumping around would make sense to users. 
So the way that I did this was just made that whole drone selection and, and time page the next step in this flow. So you input all your package details and then when you click next, you're done with that page and then you go to select your drone date and time. And another change that I made here is just included the addresses for the routes up at the top of this delivery details page so that the user doesn't have to go back to the page before if they wanted to just reassure themselves that they put in the correct address. So that's always right there, easy to access. And next, I thought that there was some room for improvement on these drop downs over here. So right now, the labels for each drop down are contained within the drop down themselves. So when you put in a number in there, the label for each drop down will disappear. And you're just left with only numbers shown on that page. So if you want to go back and remind yourself, oh, which one of these was length, what was width, what was height, you wouldn't exactly know what that is. So on my version over here, I just included the labels above each dropdown, so it's always there, easily visible. And then the next thing is we have this option to save each delivery as a draft. Now, I apologize if I'm, I'm missing something here, and I, I, I very well might be, but my initial thought was to take this out because usually when you save something as a draft, it's for a, a much longer series of steps that takes a lot of time to input. But ordering a drone delivery here is just a few more steps than say ordering an Uber, for example. So it didn't really seem to make sense to me to have the ability to save this as a draft and have a whole menu of drafts to go back to. And the next thing is over here on this um, drone selection page, we have this more dates button down at the bottom. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a button to see more dates, but it is within this big um, primary call to action button here at the bottom. So I think generally when you have a button like that, the user is going to assume that a button like that will take them to the next step in a flow. But this is just giving them more options within the page that they're already on. So what I did was just added a more dates, smaller text button here at the bottom. And then they have their next button, which would then take them to the confirmation page. So those are some of the main pieces of feedback that I had for this whole main order flow here. And I think that with those changes uh, made, it, it could be a really nice improvement on this app. But I think that the designer here already did a great job. So, um, Michael, um, if you are watching this, I wanted to just say thank you very much for submitting your designs, and I hope this feedback was helpful. So thank you, and thank you so much for everybody that watched.